now we got the e-commerce side done, mm -hmm. and let's go into like publishing a little bit more. Now, obviously, I'm big into publishing. I write a tremendous amount of low-quality content that people consume because <laughs> they have no choice to consume it. But in the bigger publishing world, which I guess you're working with bigger customers, there's probably lots of options in terms of what they do. So. When you take on a client site and you're looking at it, what is like the steps you do? Audit, what, what type mm -hmm. of, what, what, are you, what are you doing there? Yeah, I mean, we audit to, to look for a lot of things. I mean, we kind of, we've created a, our own checklist that sort of weighs different uh, factors and, and we kind of try to add it up just to have a, a system for ourselves. So you have your own ranking algorithm internally? Well, basically, that sounds sophisticated. <laughs> Who made that? But, um, well, there's a few that, been, that are circulating. Like we kind of, you know, we have different ones that, that we use. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's quite as scientific as that, but it's just you know this idea of like what what questions should you be asking yourself when you're creating content on a, on a publisher mm -hmm. site, and then how are we you know imagining the experience for the visitor to your site? And so one of the things we're looking at now is this this new E of experience and and user generated content. And we've had situations where we have clients who have user generated content, and it's a question of are they using that properly? Is that kind of up front and center? Um, because now we understand that Google is, is valuing that and, and elevating that content, unlike previously. So the, you're, you're focused a lot, I know a lot of people in your industry that do focus on publishing, do think about the whole EEAT stuff. Um, so obviously that stands for now experience, expertise, A is next, authority, and trust. trust yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know Lily has been saying a lot, like she works with a lot of YMYL clients. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the health space and stuff like that. Um, and she was blown away with the medic update and Google finally confirmed this YMYL, which is pretty cool. So you're, you're focusing your audits on making sure that you cover all those things that are mentioned, the quality readers, guidelines, and stuff like that. Absolutely. And when you read your client's content and you say, this doesn't work, and you scream at them saying, this is not trustworthy. Your content has no expertise. You don't know what you're talking about. When the client fires you, what happens? <laughs> I personally have not encountered that situation okay. yet. But, I'm sure you don't um, word it that way either. So. <laughs> we try we try to have a great working relationship with our clients. <laughs> um, no, I think in a lot of situations, it's more that they don't that they haven't leveraged some of the experience or expertise that they might already have. They haven't quite tapped into that. Right. Um, and they're so, not portraying it in the content that they're producing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So it's it's a matter of kind of helping them identify that and elevate that, or if they have to, kind of you know build that up. Interesting. Um, and giving those examples might be easy and hard. I guess the way you word it, I wouldn't be so nice when I, if I was doing that, but I guess you guys are nicer. <laughs> Have you seen the new stuff around Google's new AI content and their who, how, why type of thing? Like you should think about not just the quality raters, guidelines, and EAT, but also who wrote it? Why did they write it? How did they write it? Is, is that something you're considering now working into this new AMSIV algorithm for content development? Well, we've, we have been talking as a team mm -hmm. about AI constantly. Hot uh, topic. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, definitely a hot topic, topic and trying to navigate that as a team and for our clients. And I think, you know, people have, have a lot of questions about, you know, if, if you're going to use AI, what's what's the best way to do that that doesn't sort of violate what, what Google is looking for? And there are some things that are kind of interesting, you know, like clients might ask, you know, how do we identify? Because it's good to have authorship, right? Like you want to show who wrote yeah. the content on your site that gives you some credibility. But then if you do have AI helping to write some of the content, you know, do you say that as, did you list AI as an author? Do you say chat GPT? Um, you know, so there are questions around how, how to kind of navigate all that. Yeah. Right, and that's always been, a lot of, I guess your customers are using content writers and not, I'm not saying, a lot of, a lot of people who produce web content on the web, especially probably in e-commerce or general publishing that maybe don't have a well-known author, they may have ghostwriters. Mm -hmm. And how do you go ahead and handle that authorship concept there? That all amplifies itself now with AI writing content, which is why Google wrote, and Danny Sullivan published this whole thing about, think about now the who, how is written, like who wrote it? Do you def say, did AI write, write all of it? Was it reviewed yeah. by an editor? Who reviewed that as an editor? Why was it written? Like, what's the purpose? Are you trying to write that to help somebody? Are you trying to write that just to get clicks to your, you know, affiliate links? Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe how it was written also, like not just, like, you know, did you, what research did you do and so forth? And I think AI is a big help in terms of having people who might not know the EAD, maybe fill in the blanks. Mm. I think also the the new E of experience is a, an interesting way mm -hmm. to kind of counter the rise of AI, right? Like we're gonna have we're gonna see this sort of battle, I think, between people realizing the efficiency of AI in creating content versus making sure you elevate that that human touch, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do you how do you know? And you know, we've kind of been finding in our own work, you know, there are certain 
phrases, keywords that people search for in Google mm -hmm. that speak more to that firsthand experience. Yep. Like if you're asking, is something worth it, right? That's a question you want to hear a human answer from. And that's something AI wouldn't be able exactly. to evaluate. Exactly. Right. Well, I was having a conversation with um, Glenn Gay before on the topic, the topic of AI. Um, and we we're talking about this whole thing about the concern around if publishers don't have the incentive to create content because AI's chat is just responding with answers and not really people aren't clicking the links mm. because it's really buried in there. Mm. Um, and they're getting the answer right away. Or AI, is AI going to stop being able to produce that content because it doesn't have sources of input? Right. But then I'm like, think about it worse. Let's say somebody, an AI bot replicates me and what I do and write, finds content on the web through whatever means, press conferences or stock mm. releases or what John Mueller said or what maybe you guys said, finds it on Twitter and stuff like that and then is able to produce content based off of how I would produce content. Then the AI doesn't stop. It just keeps yeah. going and then you don't need that input anymore. And that's the crazy part that I'm kind of nervous about. Um, which is why, again, I think Google and Bing hasn't taken a stance against AI written content because maybe in the future uh, there'll just be bots doing everything. Yeah. I think that's something that we're also seeing too with some of our clients, you know, they see how hot of a topic AI is and they're like, what does this mean for our content? Like, should we start using it? And we are, you know, we kind of take the stance of like, hey, like we're still learning this too, but you know, it, it always comes back to write for people, you know, write quality content for people. And so to Jordan's point, like there's certain queries, it's like, you know, is so-and-so worth it? Like at the end of the day, an AI, in my opinion, I don't think an AI bot's gonna replicate that in a way where a human being is like, you know what, I trust this, you know? Right, but the AI bot is really just taking what a human being said, and said or multiple human beings say, and saying this, I, you know, you could trust what source the AI bot got it from. It's not like the AI bot had the experience with it, mm -hmm. but it's sourcing what that experience was from somebody else who wrote it. As long as that somebody else is still writing it, you know, then we have this sort of existential question of like, if everything just becomes AI content everywhere, yeah, I know. where, how far removed are you from the original human right. <laughs> after so a certain point? Here, SEO's dead, content is dead, <laughs> turn off the video, thumbs down it, it does. Yeah. I think why I, it's still so like, I don't know, I think for me, I think I'm just so stubborn on like, I'm so used to like, you know, giving that feedback of like, you know, real people writing real topics and especially, you know, in publishing, right? If somebody's writing about something they've been through, I guess I just, it's that being naive of just like, this can never change. Like how, <laughs> how you know, how can AI do this, so. Right, and it's fun. when I spoke to Danny Sullivan at Google about this, he's like, just because AI could produce more content faster, mm -hmm. we went through this when people were producing content just for search engines at rapid paces. Mm -hmm. And the question, I, I don't know, you, were you guys around for Panda or you just heard the stories? So. I heard, heard stories, stories. yeah. <laughs> so Panda was like, in my mind, what we're going through now is like the next Panda, but with the onslaught of much more generated content on the fly. And I think that content will be better than what we had when we had that Panda issue. What you had back then was a lot of low quality writers generating a lot of thin content on topics just to rank, just to rank well in search. People using machines and machine learning and automation and programming to create low quality content supplemented by human content all the time. Since, I don't know, since I did it since 2005, I was playing right. games to see how quickly can I get certain types of like city and you know keyword phrases ranked mm -hmm. very well and create you know, the templates, you throw in some automation, you throw in some databases and you got that. Now it's getting much more sophisticated. And a lot of these bots kind of write probably a lot better than a lot of those people wrote when Panda came out. So I think Google's not too worried about it. I think they'll be able to handle it. Like, like you said before, it's more about was this written for people versus right. just to rank and search. And the question is, oh, Google can't figure that out, but they're on a mission to figure it out mm -hmm. with this helpful content update. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the super interesting part to hear. I don't know if you listened to the interview I did with H.J. Kim of Google at XMX. If you haven't, it's definitely worth listening to. He's the guy who pretty much leads up all Google search. Um, it's like he's in charge of the list, the answer, everything in Google search. Um, and he was basically telling his personal story on why the helpful content update is so important to him. Citing references about when his father became ill and with a certain type of disease and he was doing searches and he wasn't sure if he could trust those answers mm -hmm. on the search results. And that's what drives him on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's the information behind why we have Panda, why we have Penguin, why we have the helpful content update and these core updates. So I think it's really interesting to see that. And I wonder specifically around um, 
the AI side of stuff. I didn't interview him when this whole AI craze was happening. But I think I think Google's not too worried, at least they're acting like they're not too worried, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to AI content overrunning the whole entire web is because they want that helpful aspect, that right. EA, EAT aspect of that content, no matter if it's running for YMYL or for buying uh, a new camera or something. It's all about making sure that content was written for users in a helpful way that will help them make whatever decision they need to make, either a medical decision to deal with some type of disease or some type of purchase behavior to buy a new camera that has a longer battery life than that camera. <laughs> uh, so it's just an interesting time, and I think you guys are at this peak where you're working in such an interesting space. So yeah. super excited to see you know the new faces in this space work on this. And I think you know you guys have an advantage because you're coming from it from a time where obviously Lily is a great influence um, and her teaching you like where Panda was and where we are now, but also you in terms of the, pul the, the TV world. I mean, I think that, like I said before, that extra E, I think it's gonna be there eventually and entertainment's yep. gonna be very important. And I think you should go back to Lily and say, we need to add an entertainment factor to our content for mm -hmm. our clients um, because I think that's gonna matter a lot because people are not gonna just wanna get useful, experienced, authoritative, you know, expert and you know trustworthy content which trust is the most important part mm -hmm. but they're gonna want to be entertained along the way and yep. to entertain them it's gonna be hard and I think that's where it's gonna step off to the next level and that just brings it back to like you know how do you create you know brand affinity with your content right exactly. like going back you know if we have a site that does really well in entertainment you might just go right to them like I'm signing on the newsletter it's like you know how do we use what we're doing to best facilitate the best brand experience. So right. it all comes back to that. So you guys are in a very exciting space and mm -hmm. looking forward to what you guys introduce in the future. So yeah, thank, yeah. You. thank you. So could you please uh, start should we start with you first? So yeah, that's fine. Uh, James, yeah. can you please tell people here in this camera how they could follow you, learn more about you. It might be LinkedIn, it might be your website, something. Yeah, absolutely. So best way to learn more about me is my LinkedIn, uh, Jamie Reedy, and you can see me. I work at AMSIV and I just recently authored a blog on the AMSIV website about the new E for experience. So when the new, new E comes. You <laughs> should write it before it comes. I'm going to write yes. it before it comes. Yes. Ahead of the curve. Yes. <laughs> and um, you can follow me also on LinkedIn, Jordan Mazza, M-A-Z-Z-A, -Z -Z -A, and on Twitter, uh, at Jordan Mazza TV. I still have the TV in there. Uh, but that that could come into play moving forward, so I think I'll probably keep. Never that. drop the TV. Yeah. It's always keep it there. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so it. much. Appreciate it.